Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we are going over a grocery haul from a local farmer's market. I am so excited. And I just found in my area a local delivery service that delivers produce, dairy products, and some other goodies that we're gonna get into. And I'm excited to share that with you because if you live in kind of the local general area I do, you could benefit from this service as well. So we're gonna go over what I got at the farmer's market, why I bought it at the farmer's market. We're gonna preserve up a bunch of stuff from this farmer's market, and we are gonna make dinner with some of the stuff that I got at the farmer's market. The first thing I got are two more flats of strawberries, and these are organic strawberries. I'm gonna show you the farm, just in case you are interested in the farm. I have been going to this farmer's market for eight years. This is not the farmer's market we went to together, this is a different one. This is a really big farmer's market in a town, two towns over from me. And it's just grown and grown over the last eight years and it warms my heart to see it. But this is the first time I've ever seen organic strawberries there and I snatched them up. I only buy strawberries when they're in season. I don't generally buy strawberries at the grocery store because they just don't have very much flavor. Washington and Oregon grown strawberries are delicious and you just can't get that flavor from getting them from the grocery store. So when they're in season, I like to buy a year's worth and preserve them. Now I do have a pretty big strawberry garden out in the garden, but they're not producing strawberries yet. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a year's worth. So I wanna make sure that I supplement and I support some local farmers by buying them at the farmer's market. Now I did get a fantastic deal on these strawberries. They were, $5 more a box for the organic as opposed to what I bought at the last farmer's market, the one that we went to together. But because I went about an hour before they left and I said I wanted to get four boxes, she gave me a $5 discount on each box. So, cause I don't think she wanted to bring them back to her farm. So I got these organic strawberries actually for the same price that I spent for the non-organic strawberries. So I'm really excited about that. So we're gonna start processing some of these, all these strawberries today. They have to be processed today. That is the one thing about Oregon and Washington strawberries. They are so delicious, but their shelf life is very short. So you have to process them kind of within a couple days of getting them. The next thing I got are 20 bunches of cilantro. This is locally grown cilantro and it smells incredible. It was two bunches for a dollar, which is 50 cents cheaper than I can get one bunch at my grocery store. And we are gonna freeze dry this cilantro. Now I planted what I thought was a lot of cilantro in my garden and I planted it about eight weeks later than I could have. And we had 80 and 90 degree weather in May Cilantro is a cold weather crop. It does not like 80 and 90 degree weather. And so my cilantro is very stunted. <laughs> it is nowhere near anywhere where I can harvest it even for salads yet at this point. And so I didn't wanna miss the opportunity of supporting my local farmers and getting some locally grown, incredibly smelling cilantro to preserve up. We are gonna freeze dry this freeze dried cilantro is incredible. So I got 20 bunches. I don't know if that's gonna be enough for a year's worth, but I'm hopefully going to be planting a fall harvest of cilantro. So maybe we can get some more cilantro from the garden, but I don't think any of the cilantro that I planted is gonna be harvestable. So I'm very grateful to be able to support a local farmer and get a really good deal on this cilantro. The next thing I got are two bunches of dill. My dill I planted late too, and it is not enough to harvest to preserve. I would have bought more dill, except like I said, for the strawberries, I went toward the end of the day and the farm only had two bunches left. So we are actually gonna freeze dry the dill along with the cilantro. And then I got a head of cauliflower. I'm gonna use the dill and the cauliflower for a recipe. Actually two different recipes. I'm gonna be using the dill for two recipes that I'm gonna be making in the next couple days. We are going out of town for the first time since the baby's been born with a group of friends and we're renting a house not too far away, about an hour and a half away. And when my friends and I, when we go out to town, what we do is we assign each person two meals. So I'm responsible for one dinner and I'm responsible for one breakfast. And I am going to be using the dill in, I think two or three of the recipes. And I wanted to get it at the farmer's market because it was cheaper and way better quality than what I could buy at the grocery store. But I'm gonna freeze dry it, even though I'm using it in five days, I think, because I just don't think it's gonna stay as fresh if I don't freeze dry it. So since I'm already gonna be running the freeze dryer for the cilantro, I might as well go ahead and freeze dry the dill and then I can use it for the recipes coming up. And same with the cauliflower, that is for 
one of the recipes that I'm gonna be making for this trip. So when I go out of town and I am responsible for dinners, I like to do as much of the prep ahead of time and then when I get on vacation, I don't wanna do a bunch of cooking at the vacation house. So all I'm gonna to have to do is actually cook it. I'm not gonna to have to prep any of the sauces or the sides or the breakfast or anything like that. And I'll make all those recipes with you. We're gonna do like a Mediterranean theme dinner and we are going to do a breakfast casserole but I don't know what the breakfast casserole is that I'm gonna be doing yet for out of town. I am gonna be making a breakfast casserole for dinner. We're gonna have breakfast for dinner tonight. And that is why I bought this loaf of sourdough bread. It is a breakfast casserole that calls for sourdough bread. I don't make sourdough. I don't know how to make sourdough yet, maybe one day. And so I did pick this up at my local farmer's market. And then I also got two bunches of green onions and these are gonna be for the recipes for going out of town. Now that is my farmer's market haul. The next haul is these four items. This is a new local delivery service that is in my area that delivers raw milk, locally roasted coffee, honey, and locally grown veggies and meat. The service, the delivery service partners with these different companies, the dairy, the roastery, the farmers, and you can place your order online and for a fee, they deliver it directly to your house. I am so excited to have raw milk in my house again that's not pasteurized and it's non-homogenized. So the cream is at the top and the milk is at the bottom. And so when I have my coffee, I can just pour from the top, I can get the cream in my coffee or I can shake it up and it's whole milk because I've mixed the cream back into the milk. I used to buy local raw milk for years and years and years when I was a part of a CSA. It was about a 25, 30 minute drive for me to go pick up my veggies, my community supported agriculture. I was part of a farm and about a mile away, I could pick up my milk. But now I've moved and it's about an hour away and I don't have time once a week to go two hours round trip for raw milk. But now I can partner with this local delivery service and I can have it dropped off at my door once a week. So excited about that. So I can link them down below. If you are interested, you do have to live local because they don't ship it. It's a delivery service. And you can also find different things like this local honey. This is a blackberry honey from someone who has bees local to me. And then coffee or veggies or meat. Now I am gonna be making some cold brew coffee with this. This one sounded really good. Josh and I really like medium roast the best. And this is from Costco. It's a single origin coffee and it says it has notes of milk chocolate, salted caramel, and apricot, which sounds absolutely delicious to me. And this milk, this is organic grass-fed raw milk, and I got one gallon, so I bought two half gallons, and I'm so grateful to have that in my house. And I don't know if it's showing up for you, but the cream line is about right here. So this is a lot of cream to milk ratio, so I can enjoy the cream in my coffee, and I can enjoy cooking with it as well. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a sweater, it's because it's only gonna be the high of 52 today. And so we went from the highs in the 80s and 90s in May to the mid 50s in June. So it's only supposed to last for the next like five days, but it is a little bit weird. And it has been pouring off and on all day. And so I wanted to get out to the garden today, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So this is perfect for this project today. The first thing we need to do is wash all of the cilantro. Cilantro comes out of the garden extremely muddy. And so we need to get it cleaned up. I do have my salad spinner out because we're gonna be washing so much. I didn't want to wash it without using that because we're gonna, we're gonna wash a lot of it and it needs a good, good washing. So what I think I'm gonna do is take some scissors and cut the end of the stems off. I'll give those to the chickens and I will freeze dry all of this. I don't mind using this part of the stem from the cilantro, I just don't want all of it so the chickens can enjoy that. So I'm gonna take this part of the cilantro and put it in our salad spinner. I love this salad spinner. I can link it down below if you're interested and you need a salad spinner. I'll probably get three or four heads of cilantro in there. You can see there's actual dirt. That's dirt on there. So we don't want that in our final product. So yeah, let's do 
four bunches of cilantro. The chickens will love this. I'll take the rubber bands off those before I give it to the chickens. Now I have cold water. I want to get this cilantro really clean because I don't want actual dirt in my food when I go to cook with this cilantro. I have never preserved up a large quantity of cilantro before because I have never, this is, I've never really thought about it before. I should have done it last year. I had a ton of cilantro in my garden last year and I had a freeze dryer. I don't know if it was what it was, but I never thought of actually taking that cilantro and freeze drying it until this last winter. So I'm really making an effort to try to get a lot in the freeze dryer. Freeze dried cilantro is incredible. It's not like dehydrated cilantro. It has a ton of flavor. Can you see that dirt? That's after two rinses. So I'm gonna do it a third time. I'm really excited about this local delivery service. I found I was at a birthday party over the weekend and I was talking to one of my friends and she was telling me that her daughter gets her milk and eggs and meat delivered to her door and she lives in my general area and I was I was so excited I said share with me what this company is and she was able to share with me and now I have access to local organic grass-fed raw milk again like I said I just could not justify the time it would take for me to drive in order to get my local raw milk it's legal in Washington state to sell raw milk in grocery stores but there are no grocery stores in my area that sell it currently and so I I just that's something I had to give up for a time because I just did not have the time and to find this company that was started by a husband and wife they are passionate about the best quality food possible and they realized in 2020 that it, it wasn't necessarily accessible to everybody and they really wanted to make it accessible to everybody they were inspired by the movie or documentary Food Inc. I'm sure many of you have watched that. And if you haven't, I would highly recommend it. It's a very, very good documentary on our food system. And it just sheds light on how the conventional food system is. And it definitely is inspiring to kind of try to make some changes by, you know, buying local whenever possible. And so because they were inspired and they wanted to bring locally grown the best quality meat and dairy to people's homes they started this company back in 2020 and i am going to benefit from it and i'm grateful for it and it's just you know we're all in a place where we just have to figure out what works for us when and you know right now driving two hours round trip to buy my milk was not realistic but now i can have it delivered to my door for a very very reasonable fee it is very worth the fee to me so i'm super grateful to find them now that we have all of our cilantro washed up, we get to, oh, and I went ahead and I washed up the dill too. The dill, I am going to just cut the little fronds off and we will just freeze dry a little bit of the stem, but mostly just the fronds. And this is some super high quality dill. This farmer did a fantastic job growing this dill. You know what I need to do? right now before I do anything else is I need to get the freeze dryer cooling because it needs to cool for 15 minutes before we can put this in there. Now that we have the dill on here, we're gonna start loading up cilantro. Now this is gonna take more than one freeze dryer session to freeze dry all of this, I believe. I didn't really think about that when I bought my cilantro. So I pulled out another tray here. So I'll start freezing whatever does not fit on the tray for this first round. Wish you could smell it in here. Fresh herbs are unlike anything. They are so intoxicatingly just yum. And the awesome thing is the freeze dryer holds in this beautiful freshness, unlike dehydrating. 
Dehydrating does a good job with some herbs, the hardier herbs, not so much with the really tender ones like cilantro, chives, dill. The freeze dryer does a way better job. Parsley does okay with dehydrating, but it does better with freeze drying. So I'm excited to get all of this preserved up. So I am kind of stuffing my trays probably a little bit on the full side, but if I'm gonna run my freeze dryer, I wanna try to pack it as full as I can. So we already have all of these trays filled. So before we run out there, I'm gonna get this tray filled. I did not realize how much parsley I purchased that it was gonna take more than one freeze dryer load, which is totally fine. I don't think this, uh, freeze dry session is gonna take very long at all because the herbs don't have a ton of moisture in them. But I don't wanna put this back in my fridge. I'm gonna go ahead and par freeze it because you can save yourself a step or the freeze dryer a step by par freezing it. Because the way the freeze dryer works is it first freezes the food and then freeze dries it. So if you pre-freeze the food, then the freeze dryer doesn't have to do that. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and stack it like this. And I'm gonna bring all of this out there at one time. is get all the cilantro out of here and I'm gonna use this colander and this colander to wash our strawberries because we need to wash these really well too. I don't really want cilantro getting into my strawberries. Okay, perfect. I never want you to think that I am a purist and I buy all organic or I buy all local. You guys have seen my grocery stores. I am just a person trying to do my best. And when I can find organic and local, that is the best. But like I said, this is the first time I've ever bought organic strawberries because they weren't even available to me. And I was just blessed that they happened to be the same price as the conventional. But if all I had available were conventional grown strawberries that were local. That's what I would have purchased. And so, you know, we're just all in this trying to do our best and we have to just make decisions what fits our schedule, what fits our time, and what fits our budget. Before I start cutting the tops off those strawberries, I need a area to put the strawberries on. And these are the strawberries that I processed over the weekend and these need to get into Ziploc bags. While I was out in the freezer, I figured I might as well get my garlic scape pups and we'll get these bags up too. I'm gonna use my reusable silicone bags for the strawberries. I don't know what I'm gonna do long term with these strawberries, if I'm gonna turn them into jam, if I'm gonna freeze dry them or what, but I wanted to get them preserved so they didn't go bad just sitting in my refrigerator. And I like these silicone reusable bags so I don't have to waste a Ziploc bag. So we're gonna get these, and I can use these for smoothies and things like that. So just getting them in the freezer and then once I know what I wanna do with them, I will be able to decide. I can link these down below if you are interested. Strawberry and rhubarb being ripe and ready to be bought I consider this like the beginning for harvest season for us. We are a little bit cooler starting out this year. It was a little bit different. Having 90 degree weather in May was really crazy, but we are starting to have harvest season. I you know, see people in the South that already have tomatoes and stuff like that. We're far from that, but this is where it can start getting really crazy. And sometimes when things come in, like these strawberries, I don't know what I want to do with them long term. 
but I don't want to miss the window of purchasing them and getting them in my home so that later I can decide what I want to do with them. If I want to keep them frozen for smoothies, they're already ready to go. If I want to freeze dry them, all I have to do is put them on a tray and freeze dry them. They're ready to go. And I have time if I just at least get it from the farmer's market or from the farm into my freezer. I now have time to think about what I want to do with it. Do I need more jam? Do I want to make strawberry lemonade concentrate? And this just buys me some time before I have to figure out what I want to do with it. So these are going to go in the freezer and I can reuse this piece of parchment to put the strawberries on that I'm going to process today, which is awesome. And then before I run out into the freezer, I'm going to go ahead and get these garlic scapes packed up into one of these bags as well. And I'll just use these garlic scape pucks just like I would garlic. I won't reuse this parchment paper though for the strawberries because that will turn it into a garlic flavored strawberry, which nobody wants. I'm gonna put these garlic skate pucks in the inside freezer because I'm gonna use these within the next month or so in cooking. But these whole frozen strawberries are gonna go out into the outside freezer. I'm gonna try to take as little of the strawberry off as possible, but I wanna get the tops off. And then I'm gonna give the tops to the chickens and they will greatly appreciate that. I might be weird, but I really like doing projects like this that take really no mental energy. I can put my headphones in, I can listen to an audiobook, and I can just see my efforts pay off. I don't know, it's just like tedious and repetitive, and it's something I really enjoy. So this is one reason why I like harvest season, because I like doing projects like this. I like doing projects that take more mental energy, but something just super satisfying about seeing your efforts pay off and I love that I spoke with the farmer I I know who grew these and all winter long as I enjoy these strawberries I can picture the farmer and it's just a really beautiful thing all the strawberries are now topped washed and ready to go in the freezer I'm going to put them in the freezer like this and then probably sometime tomorrow I'll bag them up like I bagged up the other strawberries these along with the cilantro stems are going to go to the chickens. Once I get that in the freezer, we're going to get going on dinner tonight. I'm really excited to share with you this dinner that we're going to make. It's my friend's recipe, or she found it online, and it's so good. So we're going to make that next. It is perfect time to get going on this breakfast casserole for dinner because it needs to soak for a few hours and it's still early in the day. We've made great progress. We have the strawberries done, the cilantro done, and now we're gonna going on dinner. I have a nine by 13 baking dish here and we are going to process this delicious sourdough that I got at the farmer's market. Maybe one day I will master the art of sourdough, but for now I can take advantage of people that know how to make it really well and I can buy it from them. So I'm gonna cut this sourdough into one inch or so cubes. I'm gonna use the whole loaf and the sourdough gives this breakfast casserole a really distinct, delicious flavor. This is a sweet breakfast casserole and so the sweet pairs really well with the tanginess of the sourdough. I'm just gonna lay all this bread in the bottom of this pan. This is one of those dishes you can make in advance if you want. So if you were gonna make this for Christmas, you could make it the day before and have it soak in the refrigerator overnight. So you don't have to think about it the morning of. I don't know about you, but sometimes we just like to have breakfast for dinner. And because I'm in the kitchen right now, I figured I would make this recipe as opposed to pancakes or waffles or something like that, where I can prep this in advance and just have it be ready for me. Cause this is gonna soak a little bit before we put it in the oven. 
So this one loaf fit perfectly in this nine by 13 dish. And now we're gonna make the custard that's gonna go in and on top and soak up in this bread. For the custard, we're gonna start with eight eggs and these are our homegrown eggs. So this is gonna be enough for dinner tonight. Plus this is going to be breakfast for the next few days for Josh and I. So it's kind of a win, win, win. Just salt. That's not in the recipe, but I add salt to everything. A cup of cream. This is very thick cream. The delivery service does offer cream from the same dairy, but they were sold out when I put my order in. So we're just gonna use some store-bought cream. Two cups of milk. Vanilla. Sugar, I'm reducing the amount of sugar the recipe calls for by a fourth of a cup. And we're gonna mix that together and that's our custard. the bread into the custard so it can start to absorb a little bit. There are two things that are really yummy about this breakfast casserole or French toast bake is the sourdough and then the topping we're about to make that goes on the top right before we put it in the oven. Let's make the topping now. This is one of the reasons why I reduced the amount of sugar in the actual casserole because this has a half a cup of brown sugar in it. So it adds to some sweetness to it. We're gonna add a half a cup of all purpose flour, a good pinch of salt, and a half a cup of butter. And I kind of melted this butter a little bit too much in the microwave, but we can make it work. We're gonna mash this all together until we get a crumble topping. And here's our kind of crumble topping. It's a little bit soft because the butter was soft. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge and then we will put it on our casserole right before we bake it. That is not ideal for the garden. It is starting to hail pretty heavily and there's not much I can do about those veggies other than hopefully they're okay. <laughs> oh goodness, my garden is a little too big to run out there and try to cover it last minute like this. So survival of the fittest. So now that we have breakfast, the breakfast casserole bake done. I know that for dinner tonight, Josh is gonna want some protein to go along with it. There is eggs in it, but still it's kind of a bread based sweet type dish. So I did thought some breakfast sausage from the local hog that I purchased. And I, I thought enough out so that we can have it for dinner tonight. We can have some for breakfast. And then hopefully, yes, we should have enough for dinner tonight, dinner, or for dinner tonight for breakfast. And then I want to cook one of these logs up for a breakfast bake that I'm gonna bring and prep later in the week for the breakfast I'm responsible for, for going out of town. I only want a dirty one pan. So we're gonna cook the sausage for tonight first. I'm gonna make patties. For the casserole, I want ground sausage. So we'll cook the patties first and then I'll cook the ground sausage after. Let's
Alrighty friend, we have the sausage for breakfast or dinner for breakfast tonight. And then the sausage for the breakfast casserole I'm gonna make for taking out of town. And then now we can get going on making the cold brew. I want to bring cold brew for the day that I'm responsible for breakfast. I'm also gonna make some caramel sauce and chocolate sauce. I'm gonna bring my espresso foamer so we can make some fun cold foams. And I'll bring you along when we make the chocolate sauce and caramel sauce. But first, I want to try out this Mexican coffee. This is Gathered Harvest, which is the company that delivers. And I will link them down below. And I wanted to try this out before I end up bringing it. We're going to start it today. We'll strain it tomorrow. We'll make the caramel sauces and hot sauce tomorrow. Caramel sauce and chocolate sauce, not hot sauce, <laughs> tomorrow. But first we need one cup of coffee. Grounds. While that was grinding, I just got four cups of cold water in a jar. Cold brew is so good. It's less acidic than hot coffee and it's so easy to do. You don't need anything special at all to make it. You just need a jar, some coffee. I ground this on the coarsest setting on my coffee grinder. And then we need one cup of coffee, ground coarsely. So that's a half a cup. And I'm gonna get one more cup in here. I thought it would be fun since we're gonna do a simple breakfast casserole that we could play around with some yummy coffee drinks on vacation. But I wanna give this a taste test before I bring it for my friends to try, because I know I like another coffee that I have that I could make the cold brew for. I'm gonna shake this up. So I'm gonna set this on the counter until tomorrow and we will strain it tomorrow. So that is gonna sit there for about 24 hours or so. We'll strain it tomorrow. We'll give the coffee a try, but tomorrow we are also gonna be making the caramel sauce and hot sauce, the caramel sauce and chocolate sauce. <laughs> so we can play around with making some fun coffee drinks, which I'm really looking forward to. We're also gonna make a breakfast casserole and I have a whole list of other things, but I'm not exactly sure what those are. They're on my list, so I don't have to keep them in here to remember. So we got everything done today that I was planning to get done in the kitchen. I even got the dishes washed. The dishwasher is going. I did not put those dishes away. I could, but maybe I will a little bit later. I think I'm gonna call it now for what I was planning to get done in the kitchen. I will show you what it looks like when I put the sprinkle sugar topping on the French toast. That and the sourdough just makes this casserole so good. Now this is the first time I'm making it. My friend has made it for me in the past and it's absolutely delicious. So I'm looking forward to that along with the sausage for dinner tonight. And then I'm gonna bake that at 350 degrees uncovered for 40 to 50-ish minutes until it's solid through and we'll serve that with sausage and that will be dinner for breakfast or breakfast for dinner tonight and breakfast for breakfast for the foreseeable future. So thank you so much for being here, friend. I am so excited about this upcoming weekend. I will bring you along all the recipes we are going to be making to bring on vacation with us. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Don't forget, I will leave the recipes linked down in the description box if you're interested in them. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.